Hi guys, this is Jenny, and I've decided I'm going to do a scrapbook layout to sort of use up a few of the, um, some of my favorite things that I had set aside at one point to use for a layout that never happened, or things that I've just recently found that I can't believe I didn't use before. So uh, I've kind of pulled a few things together that I thought would look good together, and um, I'll go through them real quick. Um, these are the pictures that I wanted to scrap, so I'm going to use one or both of them. Um, this is our sweet baby angel dog, um, Blue. And uh, what's odd about this is that I had um, I had edited it on my photo on my phone just with you know a typical like just the little edit button that makes it a better you know looking picture, and then I opened it on Photoshop and printed this picture which I don't think is a very good picture and it doesn't really look like that at all in, in the actual photograph that's on the computer and then I opened it in the regular Windows file um, and this was the picture that printed from it so anyway I like the vivid background but I also like the the vivid you know picture of him in this so I thought I might use both of them in a way um, so we'll see about that but um, I have this um, beautiful piece of Webster's Pages paper that's with this globe I really um, want to use. It's got this beautiful um, sort of geometric um, prism kind of purple paper on the back, but I really, I, I really like the globe part. And this um, lovely gray and white stripe. This is also Webster's Pages. I think it was part of a Valentine's collection. Because it's got that writing on the back, which is nice, but I liked, I really like the gray and white stripe. Got this pretty little studio um, paper, I think it's an 8x8, it's like a navy sort of distressed polka dot. And um, this is a piece of, one of my favorite pieces of paper, and honestly I cannot remember who it is. I want to say it's... Um, Oh, I just can't remember. But I love it because of the blueprint stuff on it. And um, I think I used part of it for something else. And I've been saving this one piece. So I'll be using that. And then I've got this piece of navy corrugated paper. So I really like this, this sort of gray and um, navy and white kind of look. And maybe some of that green there. And this is a tag that was part of a kit. Um... And I can't remember what it come, where it came from either. Um, eh, it might be crepe paper, but it's got those same colors, so I like that for maybe a journaling spot. And then I've got a couple pages of um, thicker pieces. I like this "Be Kind" or "Remember This" um, for a title or something else. And then some of these little pieces that are just um, I thought would be cute, like this that little pick me up. I like that sort of. Um, bringing in maybe that sort of olivey green color because I've got um, I've got some embellishments I would plan to use like either that one either one of those paper clips um, this is a really old little chipboard um, sort of instax kind of Polaroid frame from crepe paper that I um, love. I have a few of those left that I'm just saving on to. This is from Pink Fresh, and I love that same sort of olive color in the navy I thought I would use. This is an old piece of, um, uh, one of the, some embellishments came in from a scrapbook circle kit. Um, so I like the navy for that. Uh, another little Hello Sunshine mm, might be... American Crafts, I'm not sure. These are little sort of gummy kind of um, embellishments from Pink Fresh. So I like the camera and that um, little flag. And let's see, maybe that little house or heart. This is a little tiny um, binder clip from, I think it's uh, Amy Tangerine. And then um, these, I love these little two by two. Um, pieces from the Pick Me Up collection by Paige Evans for Pink Paisley and I kind of liked like yeah I kind of thought about picking up a lot of this sort of olive color in that so that's kind of what I'm thinking for embellishments and then um, I made this handy little <laughs> uh, swatch book in 
um, another video that I hope to get up soon on YouTube. And it's, um, I used a stencil from um, the Crafters Workshop to create a swatch book of all of the distress inks and all the distress oxide inks. I recently bought the newest collection of the oxide inks, all all 12 of them. I think it's 12. And so I really wanted to kind of be able to look at them this way and um, so I, I cut out these tags on my silhouette. I used a stencil to um, to brush or to um, use a dauber to rub on the inks on every one of them and then I made a little um, cover tag with another stencil and sort of like a rainbow pattern that I laminated and so I've got both of those in the back and the front. And then I can add to it as I get more um, inks. And what I really liked about this is when I was laying it out as the inks were drying there were colors that I would never have put together that ended up laying next to each other that made the most, just the coolest palette and I um, just really thought that that was going to be a great tool for me to kind of put together things that, I don't know, I think it was like this sort of stormy sky and maybe one of these purples and like a green or something and it looked so cool. I think it was like that old paper. Just those three colors. I, I don't know, it just, um, I thought it was a really neat way to look at it. I've just always had them in the, you know, in the containers and haven't really um, ever, you know, swatched things out like this and um, I think it was really helpful because a lot of the inks, especially with the distress ones, the oxide ones, it's hard to see, you know, what it's actually going to look like from the, um, you know, from the front cover. So, anyway, um, what I thought was really good about this is that when I was sort of picking out this palette of gray and navy and white and maybe like an olive green, I could pick out some of these um, distress inks that I might want to use with it. So, from this, I picked out um, the crushed olive, fossilized amber, that old paper, um, chip sapphire, and ice spruce. And these are the two oxides, and these are the rest. And I know I have the oxide in this, but I can't find it. Um, so anyway, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Other than that, I have no clue what I'm going to do. But I really um, miss just kind of doing something and having fun and filming it. So. That's what I'm going to do and share with you, and we will just get started and see where we go from here. Alrighty, um, I'm not sure why, but this portion of the video, uh, it starts off kind of like this yellowy tint to it, and it does get better um, in terms of the color. I'm not quite sure why that happened. Uh, this is all filmed at the same time, and um, I'm, I'm not really sure if one of the light bulbs maybe went out. My craft room is uh, downstairs and there's one window but it's small and then so this was at night too so I don't have a lot of daylight but anyway um, I decided I'm going to do a little background um, smushing with some of those distress inks to um, just kind of lay some color down to um, be able to build off of and I started doing a smushing kind of technique with you know um, a piece of acrylic or packaging paper and then uh, I didn't really like the way that went. I put the whole piece of paper down on it and I really didn't like the way that looked either. It kind of just made a mess and I wanted more navy and I ended up with more of that chartreuse color. Um, so I kind of kept messing with it for a minute and then um, I just really didn't like it. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted a little piece of color in the left hand corner or the left sort of right, the left side, sorry, the right side and um, I got a bunch on the left side so uh, I kind of thought I could still make it work and I dried it and then I just decided no that wasn't gonna work so I um, punt on that and go back to another new piece of paper and I did the same thing except I, this time I put the color onto the actual piece of acrylic paper um, or plastic paper and then smish it onto my page. It's still, I don't know why, what was wrong with my smishing, maybe I haven't done it in a while, but it still didn't turn out quite the way I wanted it to. I mean, a lot of it gets covered up anyway. I just um, kind of wanted some of that color to peek through 
and tie the other colors of the embellishments and papers together. But this looked better than the first one, so <clears throat> I decided to go ahead and use that. So I just dry it on both sides with my um, heat tool to kind of speed up the process. And um, I do try to lift a little bit of the color off later, but um, and because it wasn't primed with any gesso, it does get warped, but um, I glue it onto another piece of paper later, so that um, helps. All right, so while that continues to dry, I take um, the top photograph that turned out to a better color um, and put some three-dimensional adhesive on it, and I decide I'm gonna use both of those pictures. At first, I just wanted to show you the difference um, and why I'm not still not quite sure why that turned out that way. But um, I decided to use them both and kind of layer them on top of each other. And instead of, um, because that was kind of loose, that watercolor, instead of cutting, I decided to tear that piece of corrugated paper and then tear another piece of this um, gray and white striped paper and kind of layer that at the bottom. Um, so that kind of made it a little bit messier feel and kind of, you know, was a was a place to start um, and then I just start to build up a photo mat photo mat or sort of like cluster underneath um, my pictures with all of the um, other embellishments the tag and that eight by eight piece of paper so I'm gonna let you listen to a little bit of music and you can watch the rest of my process which is a lot of fiddling and until I get it to be where I want it to be and then I adhere everything down. So I'll come back and um, towards the end of the video.
okay, here we are, close to the end. Um, it didn't change too much from kind of where I started laying it out in the very beginning um, before the music, but I did um, I did have to break out the hot glue gun for some of the embellishments and for some of that corrugated paper to make sure it stuck down good. Uh, I had kind of planned to put some you know, like a journaling tag or maybe that one journaling tag in that little um, uh, blue and white striped bag, but I decided just to layer that instead. And I kind of went overboard with these little hearts, but I just love them so much, and they um, they have adhesive on the back, and I just um, I just decided to go ahead and go for it and use them. I did layer a piece of that um, uh, the little two by two papers from uh, Paige Evans un underneath that. Um, chipboard frame and it fits perfectly there and one of the other little papers um, I cut as it says I think it says blue skies and then some other things and the, I cut the top and put the blue sky at the top which fits because our puppy's named blue and then I used the remember this um, chipboard or thickers at the bottom for my title and I added some more of the um, just some more stickers. Just kept going with the stickers, and at the end, I um, I do write a couple little things and the date, and that is pretty much it. Uh, you can see the close-ups here in a minute, and then the final page at the end. Thanks so much for stopping by. Um, I'd love some feedback if you like me talking, if you don't like me talking, if you think this is too fast or too slow, or if you have an opinion at all. And um, thanks so much for the support and have a great day. Bye.